Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 2.01 phases of matter. And so this might look familiar to you, and I hope it does, um, because we talked a lot about this in first semester. So this first lesson is going to be a bit of a review. After this first lesson, we're going to get into a bunch of other stuff and add some more math. Yay, I can just hear you cheering in the background about that, and go from there. But I just wanted to kind of reset our brains to say, okay, we're specifically going to be talking about gases, solids, and liquids. So let's just review the differences and similarities between them. So what are the four phases of matter? Hit the pause button, make sure you know them. And when you're ready, hit play. Solids, liquids, gas, and plasma. We are pretty much going to ignore plasma. Um, plasma you find in the sun or stars. So crazy hot. Um, also in lightning. So what is the biggest difference between the four phases of matter? In other words, how do we know if something's going to be solid, liquid, or gas? The biggest difference is the speed of the molecules or atoms. So usually I tend to say molecules because there are many more things that are in molecular form. In other words, made of two or more elements. But if it's something made of just one atom, then obviously it can also be in all three phases. So the speed of the molecules or the atoms is the biggest difference between whether or not something's going to be solid, liquid, or gas. It's not how warm or cold it is. Okay, Warm or cold is simply based on the fact that the human body is approximately 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and it's how it feels. Okay, we're in chemistry now, so we're not going to be talking about how it feels. Instead, we're going to be talking about the interaction between the atoms and molecules. So, for example, yes, solid water is cold, right? Ice is cold, liquid water is warm, and gaseous water or steam is hot. However, every substance has different blank and blank points. So, the reason all solids are not cold, all liquids are not in the middle warm and all all gases are not hot is because every substance has different boiling, condensing, and freezing melting points. I put them as a slash because whatever temperature something boils at, it also condenses at that temperature. Whatever temperature something freezes at, like water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, it also melts at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So go outside, it's freezing cold. Well, sort of, right? This is what we say all the time, especially I'm making this recording in February of 2015 and it's below zero. So of course I even say it's freezing cold, but well in chemistry, sort of, it is for some things, but not everything. Yes, it's cold to our skin. Yes, water is ice and snow, but there is still air in gaseous form. Think about it. If the air froze every time it got cold, we would be like one big block, right? It would kill everything on Earth. So the air is still a gas, okay? The gasoline in your car is still a liquid. The antifreeze, the oil, all that stuff in your car that's been sitting outside overnight at minus 45 degrees, Fahrenheit is still liquid. So feeling hot or cold is not how you want to think about solids, liquids, and gases in chemistry class. Instead, you want to think about the speed of the molecules or atoms. So what's the biggest difference between the four phases of matter? The speed of the molecules. Now this chart you've seen before, first semester. So what's happening to the molecules or atoms in different phases of matter? So which one is the slowest? Well, that's going to be our solids, right? Solids are slow. Liquids are medium speed. And of course, gases are the fastest. All right, so let's skip way over here to how spread out the molecules are. Let's put a little brighter color so we can see here. So how spread out are the molecules? Are solids close together or far apart? They are very close. Liquids are medium in the middle 
and of course gases are very far apart. And so from that, they go together. And then we want to talk about definite shape. Think of a solid. Think about your phone. Is your phone the same shape every day? Whether or not you have a flippy phone or an iPhone or if your house still has a really old phone, like a rotary phone. Okay? Is the shape the same? Yes. It's still the same shape. Okay? What about liquids? Are liquids going to be the same shape? Well, no. Think about if you have a glass of water. The water takes the shape of the glass. If you spill it on the floor, there's water everywhere. What about gases? Do gases have a definite shape? Nope. They spread out and fill out the whole room. Good thing, because we need air and oxygen to breathe, whether you're in the basement of your house or upstairs in the local library. Definite volume. Volume means how much space it takes up. Does your cell phone take up the same amount of space every day? Yes. Okay. Liquids. If I have a gallon of water in a gallon jug and I spill it all over the floor, how much water did I spill on the floor? Well, one gallon of water, right? It's spread out, but it's still a gallon. So yes, it has a definite volume. What about gases? Do they have a definite volume? No, they spread everywhere. So if you have a candle lit in the kitchen, pretty soon you can smell it in the living room because the gas molecules are traveling all over. All right. Phase changes. Oh, I've been waiting all day to say this. Are you ready? But phase changes are for physical. So what are the phase changes? Hit pause and I want you to list all the phase changes. Okay, you should have at least four. At least four. You might come up with a few more, but at least four. So here they are. Melting, solid to liquid. Boiling or vaporizing, these two words are synonyms, or in other words, they mean the same. It's liquid to gas at a certain temperature. Then you have evaporation, which is liquid to gas at all temperatures when you have a liquid. Condensing is gas to liquid. And freezing is liquid to solid. Okay, I want to show a few little demonstrations quick to talk about these. So, all right, let's look at our molecular motion in solids, liquids, and gases. So, we'll hit play. The molecules are moving around. Okay, now here, there we go. Here they're t packed very tightly together and they're nice and organized. And that's true for a lot of compounds and molecules. They're really nice, organized in a pattern. And is that solid, liquid, or gas? That would be solid. There we go. Trying to get it to move. And even though they are solids, they are still moving. Atoms and molecules are always moving. So if I heat it up, you can notice they start to kind of spread out or flow. And so now we have a liquid. They are also starting to go faster. Oops, not that fast, sorry. Faster and faster. There you go. This one's being touchy today. Go figure, right? So they're moving a little bit more. Until, let's see if I can find that exact spot when they go, whoa, right? It's that quick. They hit a certain temperature. And we go from liquid to, okay, we're having a good time, to party! Woo! Right? They're having a party now because they are going crazy fast. They are taking up all the space in the entire container, so we have the gases. This demonstration, too, because I'm going to heat it up, okay? And so we got solid. It's heating up warmer and warmer. Now we don't have the nice pattern, and we have a liquid, but, oh, Look at this. Do you see how we have a few random molecules that just got way too crazy and they escaped? And now this molecule right here and this molecule, is it a solid, liquid, or gas? These are gases, but these down here are liquid. So we're still at a temperature where we would say we have a liquid, but we have a couple of gases.
gases. That's what evaporation is. Okay, that's why if you let a cup of water sit out all week, pretty soon you don't have any water left. Okay, it's because the water evaporated. So at any temperature when you have a liquid, sometimes the molecules get too close to the surface and they bump into each other and look, they escaped. Woohoo! And sometimes, oh, did you see that one? That one, it was up here, right? And it's bouncing all over in the container, like if you had a lid on the container. And when it gets down here, oh, oh, it hooked onto the other liquids. Oh, yep, it's a liquid again. So it's a constant back and forth if you have a closed container. All right, so I'm going to heat it up some more and get that potty started. And now, of course, we have some boiling because we have liquid and gas. And now we definitely have all gas, right? They are spread out. They have no shape, no volume. They take up the whole container. Whereas when it was liquid, so let's condense it. Let's, you know, party's over. We're going to start to cool it down. The molecules are going to start to move slower. And you can see they're starting to congregate on the bottom. And they're becoming liquid. And they're slowly becoming liquid. And I'm really cooling it down now to the point where, oh, yep, I got a solid, right? So if you notice, it's not like it's a perfect block like what I started with. But, you know, it's getting there. Got to give it some time. Let it arrange itself. Until we start it going again, we'll have solid to liquid, and then, of course, both while it's boiling, and then a gas. So we can look at what's called a phase diagram. We can see that as we increase the heat energy, we can look at the temperature, and we start out with a nice solid. We increase the heat, and it melts to a liquid, kind of all over, and it vaporizes to become a gas. When you have a phase change, so when it's melting, I have ice and water. I have solid and liquid. When you're boiling, think about on the stove. While it's boiling, you have liquid and gas. So during a phase change, you have both phases, the phase you start with and the phase you end with. Now if I go the other direction to the left, my heat energy is decreasing. Less energy, my gas condenses. I have a liquid, oh, less energy, now it's freezing. My liquid is turning into a solid, so I have both liquid and solid, and then it's frozen. Um, we also brought in the terms exothermic and endothermic, so we're going to review those real quick. Um, but before I do, heat can do one thing at a time. Heat can either cause the temperature to change, or it can cause a phase change. So heat can do one thing at a time. Do you hear your mom say that sometimes? I can only do one thing at a time. Okay? Like heat. It can either spread out the molecules or put them together, or it can change the temperature. So here you see this flat line. The temperature stays the same. And then once I have one phase, then my temperature can rise. When I'm changing phases, the heat is busy. Can't change the temperature. It's a flat line. Once it's all gas, then you have a change in temperature. All right, endo versus exothermic. So exo, like exit. Energy is let out oops, during a chemical or during a chemical or physical reaction, right? Because phase changes are physical. But of course, the easiest way to remember this one is exo is like exit. And endothermic. Again, it can be during a chemical reaction or a physical phase change. Energy is taken in. So it feels cold because it's actually taking the heat out of your hand and into the reaction, which sounds a little bit backwards. So you've got to think of the reaction and not how it feels necessarily. Because heat is hot um, when it's coming out of the fire, but it's going out of the fire and into your body. So the fire itself is exothermic. It's spitting it out. All right. Oh, and then I did the demonstrations. We can also look at our phase changes. My molecules speed up. I don't need to go faster. Give me some energy. Endothermic. I'm speeding up. I need to go faster. Endothermic. Now I'm condensing or freezing. I'm slowing down. My energy is going out. 
Therefore, it's exothermic.